Welcome to video number 22 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGay, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Tourism development requires a strong public-private sector partnership. Many private sector projects are economically feasible but lack the required financing to proceed. That's where government can step in to help by using its role as a stimulator to provide investment incentives that reduce the cost and risk of developing a project within preferred industries such as tourism. Governments can also use investment incentives to sweeten the pot for businesses making location decisions by enhancing the probability of higher profits and quicker returns at a destination that lies within its jurisdiction. Most attention on investment incentives focuses on attracting foreign direct investment, and FDI is very sexy to governments. It brings in outside money, and it shifts the risk to outside owners. It's a means of economic development that uses someone else's money and expertise. But is it as simple as that? The answer is no. FDI also brings in outside ownership and outside influence. Investors expect to make a profit and be able to repatriate those funds to their home account. So FDI has considerable leakage. Tourism is also an industry that impacts a community's image, ambiance, identity, and natural and cultural resources. That's a lot to put into the hands of outsiders. The mix of FDI to local investment must be carefully considered when fashioning investment laws and awarding investment incentive licenses to developers. Physical incentives are the most popular investment incentives and relate to government collection of tax revenue. Typical fiscal investment incentives include tax relief in the form of credits, abatements, exemptions, deductions, and reductions. A commonly used fiscal incentive is a tax holiday for the first few years of operation for tourism businesses such as hotels, airlines, restaurants, and tour companies. Fiscal investment incentives also include remission of tariffs and custom duties on imported goods and services that are required to complete a project that meets the competitive standards of the tourism industry being targeted. Non-physical incentives are more diverse than fiscal incentives. They include categories of various financial incentives, infrastructure provision, in-kind support, and regulatory privileges. Non-fiscal incentives range from below market interest loans, forgivable loans, guaranteed loans, cash grants, equity participation, and wage subsidies to worker training programs, roads, harbors, communication systems, land grants, administrative support during both startup and aftercare periods, and relaxation of environmental regulations. The list of possible non-physical incentives is almost endless. Policymakers in favor of investment incentives argue that in their absence, some projects will not be built or they will choose to relocate elsewhere. For destinations with limited financial resources, attracting investment through the wise use of incentives may be the only way to develop their tourism industry. Investment incentives are a trade-off in which the destination forgoes some of the potential of immediate benefits to ensure that a project will proceed with expectations that it will yield the desired benefits in the long term. In this respect, the destination also has a vested interest in its success. Use of incentives requires support of the entire business community as well as the residents who pay taxes and seek a strong local economy. Those who oppose investment incentives argue they reduce the tax base and therefore the amount of revenue available for other government programs and services. Incentives can also favor certain companies and projects over others and lead to corruption and fraud. In some cases, incentives are seen as unnecessary, as project development would have proceeded without them. Critics also argue that if private sector developers are unwilling to take the risk, why should government assume part of it for them? Local taxpayers must not perceive that even though they pay their taxes, businesses are unfairly avoiding theirs. Residents must understand the benefits of incentive use that are expected to accrue to the entire community. Investment incentives can make a destination even more favorable or they can make up for its deficiencies. 
Many investors value the positive factors within a business environment more highly than incentives. Among the most important ones are market opportunities, sound economic policies, public sector transparency, political stability, relevant infrastructure, a skilled workforce, protection against arbitrary expropriation, the lack of administrative impediments to conducting business, including international trade, and impartial courts and law enforcement within a legal system that respects international law. When these conditions are present within a destination, investors will consider it favorably. In business, time is money, especially when the situation is ripe for investment. No business wants to waste its time and money jumping through government hoops that slow the incentive process. Investment incentives should already be aligned with national objectives that engender cooperation across agencies, and proper guidelines should be established for the application of incentives to various sectors and components of the tourism industry. A one-stop investment promotion agency that facilitates paperwork and negotiations required for incentive approvals will help attract investors. Investment promotion agencies award incentive licenses or certificates to companies whose projects meet their investment criteria, which vary greatly from destination to destination. Incentive criteria is designed to produce benefits that exceed cost, thereby bringing a net gain to the community. Often there is a minimum investment required, for example $3 million for a hotel or $500,000 for international developers as opposed to $100,000 for local developers. And sometimes preferences are given to projects that include at least 51% local investment, develop new products that add to the destination mix, or help develop tourism in rural areas. Regardless of the criteria, Incentives must be awarded in a transparent manner according to automatic rules as dictated by appropriate legislation. Tourism is often a major component of urban renewal. Also existing tourism industries within destinations that have reached a life cycle stage of decline are in need of rejuvenation. Tax incentives, also known as fiscal incentives, can play two critical roles in these types of redevelopment. They can help make more projects feasible and they can create the conditions necessary for a larger number of tourism businesses to proceed with redevelopment at the same time, enabling the destination to reposition itself with a competitive product and a new image. Investment incentives can be helpful in stimulating tourism development, but not at all costs. They must be carefully legislated and fairly awarded in order to provide sufficient benefits to the local economy and society. To ensure their relevance and effectiveness, investment incentives should be monitored, evaluated, and updated on a regular basis. Now I invite you to watch video number 23, Tourism Promotion. Thank you.